This AI game creator can make games instantly. All you have to do is tell the AI what you want and the AI will code it into a game. This is the Rosebud AI Game Maker and it's an AI game engine that allows you to create a game simply from a text description. It can generate game assets and code and literally make a game from scratch. In this video, we're going to be testing out the Rosebud AI game creator and seeing if this AI can really make games instantly. Before we continue with the video, this video has been sponsored by Rosebud AI. Honestly, this AI game maker is awesome, so if you want to check it out for yourself and make games with AI, there is a link in the description to check out Rosebud. All right guys, so we're here on Rosebud AI and to test out this AI game maker and, and see what it can do, we're gonna do a bunch of challenges, trying to make different games and really just putting this AI game maker to the test. And as you can see here, we're in the Rosebud AI editor. So we can just test the game real quick. I'm pretty sure it's just a straightforward platformer. Yep, cool. This is this this is a platformer. I'll quickly run through the way this is set up, by the way. You have your game here where you can basically test out what the AI has created. Over this side here is pretty much where you make your game. This is the chat, so you can chat with the AI ask the AI to add things to your game. If you jump over here, this is basically the code that the AI has generated. So pretty much just through chatting with the AI, it's removing code and adding in code for whatever you request. And then you've got assets here as well, which the AI can generate assets. You just go over here, pick your style, tell the AI what you want. It can, it can generate all that as well. So these games are completely AI generated. So let's just try something out. It's got some suggestions here. We can make the character faster, make the platforms bigger. I'm just gonna say, make the level bigger. Let's just see what happens. And what I like is that it gives you an explanation on the changes that were made based on what you told the AI to do. So as you can see here, to make the level bigger, we need to increase the world's bounds and adjust the camera to follow the player. All you have to do is click apply, go ahead and click reload, and all the changes will be added to the game. So we can go ahead and test it out now. And there we go, we have a actual platform world. Now, uh, I don't know what's happened here. It looks like um, most of the, the background has disappeared, but it certainly made the, made the world bigger. So I'm gonna say, for some reason, the background just disappears. All right, let's submit this and, and see what happens. All right, explanation of changes, new code. Let's apply it, let's reload, and let's see what happens. So let's go this way again and see if it's fixed it. I think it actually has. Okay, that's that's pretty awesome. All right, now that we got that sorted, let's add some more platforms to our game. All right, I said add more platforms to the game, add some that move around. Let's see what happens. All right, let's apply that. Let's reload. Let's see what happens. Cool, so we've got a moving platform that um, just, just, okay. But we do have more platforms in the level, so the level is starting to feel more like a platform game. I said moving platforms don't work. Make it so they don't fall through the bottom of the world and add them around the level evenly. All right, so we've added the moving platforms and as you can see, it seems like they work, so that's cool, good. Now we're starting to really have a platform game. All right, I think it's time to add something new to our game. We're just gonna say add an enemy to our game. All right, so we get to create an asset here. So let's change the style. Let's go with pixel character. Let's just create. Now that the enemy asset has been created, it's generating the code. Let, let's see what happens. All right, so our enemy has been added to the game, but um, I think we need to change it a little. Make the enemy actually work in the game. Let's, let's see what we get with this. All right, let's apply the code, reload, and see what happens. Cool, okay, now the enemy actually works in the game. So we can uh, use the platform here and uh, there we go, we've, we've beaten the enemy. All right, so I've asked to create a weapon for the game. Uh, here's our gun and our bullets that were generated. It's generating the code now, so let's see what happens. All right, cool, so we've got our weapon um, and we can shoot. Awesome. So anyway, now that we've tested out Rosebud, I think it's time we try a few challenges. All right, so for our first challenge, we're gonna try remake one of our games. So Combat IO is basically a game I made where you pretty much fight in an endless PvP battle arena. You fight different enemies, upgrade your weapons, do a lot of stuff. Now the thing is that game is a top-down fighting game. This template we have here is for a platformer. So I wanted to see how Rosebud AI would react when we say, turn this platform game into a top-down fighting game. Now I don't know if this is going to work because I'm pretty sure the best way to use this AI is to go step by step. So you'd obviously have to change the mechanics of the player movement system and change the game entirely. So we've gotten a response from the AI, let's have a look. Certainly, I'll modify the code to transform this platform game into a top-down fighting game. 
Here's the updated code with explanations of the changes made. So it basically removes platform specific code. It modifies the player movement so that it's for a top down game. Adds some enemies, implements a combat system. That's cool. So there's an attack mechanic with the space key. Enemies take damage when the player attacks and the player takes damage when colliding. And there's a few other changes. So let's just see what happens when we apply and we run the game. And it looks like we have a top down fighting game. So if I press space, um, well, it's not quite working, but it, it, it's done something. It's taken the platform game we had into sort of a top down game. So that's really cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna click retry. And basically what retry will do is it'll, it'll run that AI prompt again, but obviously it'll generate something different. So that is a good way to sort of see what type of different results you will get. All right, so this time something different has happened. Okay, this is uh, this is interesting. Seems like we can, we can move around here. The player is sort of following the mouse and uh, we got the enemies here. We can take them out. Okay, cool. You know what? We're going to retry it again. I think we're just going to keep doing this until we get something similar to combat.io. All right, so there's an enemy. We can uh, we can move around. And if we press space, we can attack. Okay, cool. So that's kind of a, uh, a top-down fighting game. You have these enemies. They come up to you. You can press space. So now we're going to add more to the game. Let's start by, uh, say, add multiple enemies and make it so they can fight each other. Combat.io is obviously a fake multiplayer game. And the whole point is that it needs to feel like you're playing an actual multiplayer game. So the enemies need to fight each other. Also make the enemy sprite the same as the player because obviously it needs to seem like an IO game. All right, it's given us a bunch of changes. Let's apply it. Let's reload. Let's see what happens. Okay, looks like we got an error. That's all right. If you get an error, all you have to do is retry. All right, so we've received this. We're going to apply and we're going to reload our game. And as you can see, we've got multiple enemies. Some of them are fighting each other, which is cool. And uh, we can just take out the enemies there. So that's that's good as well. As you can see, all the enemies and the player are the same sprite. So it's more like an IO game. Um, cool, I like it. All right, so we're just gonna add some features now to try and make this game more like combat.io. So we've started by asking the AI to make the map bigger and the players smaller. So this sort of already gives a bit more of a combat.io vibe. I added an attack animation to the player, so it's pretty obvious when the player is attacking. So there we go, we're clearly, uh, we're clearly attacking the other enemies. Great. I asked to make the enemy AI system more advanced by making the enemies faster and just programming them like the actual player. I think this turned out pretty good. The enemies are sort of moving around, they're attacking each other, they attack the player, the player can attack them. This just improves the game. I changed the game background to look more like combat.io. I asked the AI to generate random usernames for every enemy and the player. Now it's starting to feel like an IO game. All right, so the next feature we asked was a scoring system and a leaderboard to really make this game a complete IO game. As you can see, if I take a few enemies out here, I can uh, I can increase my score and I can jump to the to the top of the leaderboard. This is honestly pretty awesome. For just a few AI prompts, we've been able to create this uh, this remake of Combat IO. Obviously, there's heaps more I can add, but this is just a really cool test of what a uh, Rosebud can do. All right, so we've got the platformer template again, and now we're going to try make Minecraft. So I've just said, turn this game into Minecraft. So let's see what happens. So this is the response I've received. I've got a bunch of code. Let's just click apply and let's reload. All right, so as you can see, it's generated Minecraft. So we've got some dirt blocks here. So as you can see, we can place a block. That's cool, and we can also break them. That's awesome as well. So there you go, we have Minecraft, and, and all we had to say was, can you make Minecraft? So after we received this, I basically asked the AI to remake it so it's Minecraft. I literally just said that, and this is what we've received. As you can see, the game has a lot more to it now. We've got a day and night cycle there. Some trees have been generated. The terrain generation system's a bit more advanced now as it's generating stone. By the way, in the asset generator, I asked to generate a wood asset and this is what we received. As you can see, we have an inventory as well. So yeah, now we have uh, Minecraft. I'm just gonna say add Minecraft and see what happens. And uh, this is what we've received. So as you can see, the trees are actually have leaves now. Looks like we have a crafting table. Um, awesome. So if we press C, we can toggle the crafting table UI. I like this way of going about using the AI, just, just asking to add Minecraft to Minecraft. I'm gonna say add heaps of Minecraft and see, see what happens. 
All right, so now we have a lot of Minecraft. As you can see, there is a lot more items. These enemies down here that are moving around. Are they enemies? I'm not sure. It seems there's new block types. There's a mining system with different tools. There's a basic mob system. The crafting system has been expanded. As you can see, I can open up the crafting menu here and I have a bunch of different items I can craft. All right, so we're gonna end the Minecraft challenge there. I think this one would be very fun to build upon and see how much of a Minecraft remake you can get with AI. Considering all I really said was make Minecraft, you could probably go into each feature and expand upon each feature to make more of a complete Minecraft game. But yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, for this challenge, we're going to be turning this platformer into a horror game. So we're going to start by saying make a dark environment. And of course, a lot of horror games have a dark environment. So that's what we're going with. All right, and there we go. Our game has a dark environment. So the next thing we're going to add to make this more of a horror game, we're just going to say add a horror enemy and see what the AI does. All right, so we now have a horror enemy in our game. As you can see, this is an AI generated horror enemy. All right, so as you can see, the enemy system has now been improved uh, i'm not entirely sure how the enemy works but this definitely uh makes the game feel more like a horror game so basically what the ai explains is that the enemy has this effect here which makes it look more menacing if the player is in range the enemy will move towards the player if the player is not in range the enemy will move back to where it was before and just move around and there's visual feedback as well in the sense that the enemy will turn red when chasing the player and when colliding with the player or attacking the player, the player will turn red as well. All right, now the next thing we need to add is a jump scare to our horror game, of course. I'm just gonna say add a jump scare and uh, see what happens. All right, we've applied the jump scare, so there should be a jump scare whenever the enemy comes near the player. That is awesome. So as you can see, um, whenever the enemy is attacking the player, uh, just randomly a jump scare will happen. So just with that, we sort of have um, the start of a horror game. Obviously, this is this is not really a horror game. I mean, this just goes to show that just with a few prompts, you, you can generate a project like this. That's awesome. If you build upon all these features, you can easily make an effective game with AI using this. So there we go, an AI game engine that can make games instantly. Once again, if you wanted to try out Rosebud AI for yourself and see what type of games you can make using AI, there's a link in the description to check it out. By the way, if you want to check out more of my content, including videos, games, and my Patreon, you can do so over at my website, badgamedev.fun. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. You can also leave a comment and subscribe if you want to as well. Peace.